So we've made a mistake in our list and we want to correct that. So first of all, we're going to check that the, what we think the mistake is, is actually the mistake. So I'm going to print the zeroth element of experiment runtime seconds. And I'm also going to print the type of the zeroth element of experiment runtime seconds. And then I will do, oops, got some indenting going on. And that is because I've got a bracket. Then I will do print the value and the type of the last element as well. And I forgot that bracket again. Oh, come on. There we go. So the first element, which I can actually see if I go back to where we define the list, it doesn't have a decimal point. So Python has interpreted it as an integer, a whole number. But the last element, and indeed you can trust me on this, all the other elements, they do have a decimal point, even this one, which is 17.0 and 12.0, and they are therefore floats. Now, we might want to be careful about whether we use integers or floats because sometimes certain operators act differently on those two types. So for consistency, we would like everything to be a float. Uh, so we're going to go straight into task 5.4 and we're going to correct that. Now we could go back up to here where we originally defined the list, change the list and rerun our entire notebook. But that's not always what we want to do. I mean, it, it might be that this is raw data and it's coming from, say, a spreadsheet or a sensor. And it, every time it's going to have the exact same problem and we don't want to have to manually change it every time. It may also be that we've run an awful lot of code and we only need to make sure everything's afloat for one last final step. So we're actually going to reassign that zeroth element. So we're going to do experiment runtime second zeroth element equals the float of experiment runtime second zero second. So this is going to be 100 the integer, which I'm going to pass to this function the float, float, which will convert integers to floats. Um, I will then reassign experiment runtime second the zeroth element with that new float version, and then just to prove that it works. I'm going to do that. Wait, I now have a float. I could also, because I'm just changing one, I could have done 100.0 here instead of using the float function. I've got lots of options. 